to St. Andrew's worship this fifth Sunday of Lent. We are thankful that we can be together uh, through this technology and, and at the same time we're missing being with you. But um, we know that the Lord is here among us. He's with you where you are and he's here with us as, as we record this and we look forward to the day when we can worship together again. I want to and uh, make you aware of some things that are coming up at St. Andrews and um, I'll share some announcements and then we will start the service. First of all, we are grateful for those of you who have remembered that St. Andrews still needs your support, your financial support, so we can continue the ministries that we're doing here and you can send a check to St. Andrews and um, we will deposit those once a week. You can also give online, just click the Give tab and follow the directions. Some of you have asked about the Easter dinner outreach that we take part in every year, uh, providing an Easter meal for the families in our community. We are going to do that this year. We are gonna provide a meal for um, our Avanza families. So in order to in order to eliminate lots of people interacting and sharing germs, we would ask that you would make a, do a financial donation this year and we will get one person to do the shopping and we will create baskets of food that we can leave on the doorstep of our Avanza families. You can send a check for that to St. Andrews and put Easter dinner on the memo line. And we would like for you we would like to have those by April 8th, if at all possible. Also, just a reminder that our kids have not been forgotten, and there will be an updated children's lesson uh, for today. You'll be blessed by that lesson. Uh, it's on our website. If you go to the Ministries tab and then click down on Children, you'll find that video available for you. It's great for families to watch it together. There's also a worship guide for parents and kids to use as they discuss the lesson and some activities there that you can do together with your family. And lastly, the youth group will meet tonight, um, Sunday night, as, <laughs> on a, um, as we met last week on Zoom. This is our Ask Anything night. So we have pre-recorded the answers to the questions that our youth asked about over the last few months, and we will be watching those together and talking about them at our Zoom meeting on Sunday night. If you or um, your student would like to tune in, we have sent the, the Zoom address link where, where you will find the meeting to all the parents' email addresses. So look for that, and um, we hope to see you there this evening. Thank you. Oh, the wondrous love is 
Please kneel as you are able at home. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent, according to your promises declared to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant a most merciful Father for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grant to your faithful people, merciful Lord, pardon and peace, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. We'll read the Jubilate responsibly by half verse. O be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Bless the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be assured that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. O oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be faithful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures from generation to generation. The psalm appointed today is Psalm 130. Let us read together. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The first lesson today is from Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times and seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, 
but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. 
If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Please say together the Quarte Dominum. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord, for he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth and it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I have sent it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Once again, good morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your presence. Your presence that is without interruption. Thank you because, Lord, even now, in our current situation, all over the world, we believe that your presence is with us. Lord, I pray that as I bring your word today, that you will speak unto us. Let your word, O oh God, impact us where we are. Let your word, O oh God, impact our world. And let your word, O oh God Almighty, bring transformation that we all need, even at this time. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I have tied to this message, a dying world in desperate need of the living God. A dying world in desperate need of the living God. And I've taken my test from the psalm that was read to us a while ago. Psalm 130. This psalm is one of the 15 songs of our saints that pilgrims, who were ascending to Jerusalem, used to sing. And they always sing any of the 15 psalms or songs as they went to Jerusalem to celebrate any of the festivals that they were accustomed to. But this particular psalm, Psalm 130, is categorized as an individual lament. It is a psalm of sorrow, and at the same time, a psalm that shows the greatness of God. It is a psalm of agony, because the psalmist sang this song in a situation of agony. It is also one of the seven penitential psalms in the Psalter that were used during the Lenten 
uh, season in the medieval church. And incidentally, it is what uh, we are to read today for our service. So today, I want to consider this psalm under the following subtopics. Number one, the terrain of the situation. Number two, human response. Number three, God's faithfulness. Number one, the terrain of the situation is shown to us in verse 1a, which says, out of the depths, or from the depths. This phrase means and describes to us a situation that is very, very dangerous, a situation that is unwanted, a situation of agony where the psalmist found himself. The phrase, out of the depths, is used elsewhere in the Old Testament uh, to refer to the sea. Uh, if we look at Isaiah chapter 51, verse 10, or Ezekiel 27, verse 34, or Psalm 69, verses 2 and 14. Or even uh, we can picture what the psalmist is talking about when we read the situation of Jonah in Jonah chapter 2, verses 6, I mean 2 to 6. So the phrase is often pictured as a place of watery chaos. It is a situation of Two more. It's a situation of trouble. It's a situation of problems that the psalmist himself could not uh, explain. And when we look at Jonah in the belly of the fish, we see uh, a situation where man found himself and he only had to surrender to the living God. Or the situation when the sailor and all the people on ship uh, found themselves, and they could see the turbulence that is raging on the sea. And the only thing they could do uh, was to look at the man who was sleeping. In fact, the Psalm 130 in Latin word means de profundis. And they perform this is used by many countries to invite people for funerals. It is a time when people are invited to come and mourn, to cry, and perhaps get some relief, to express themselves. Does this tell you or suggest to you something about the current situation that we have found ourselves today all around the world? The pictures, the numbers of death from different countries breaks my heart and I know that it also breaks your heart. As I'm talking to you now, over 30,000 people have died just because of this virus that we do not understand, just because of something that is raging the whole world and is destroying people, killing people in their thousands. We have today countries that do not know what to do with dead bodies. The psalmist could call people with this psalm and people of many countries in those days could use this psalm to, to, to call people for funerals. But who shall we call today? History tells us that when Luther was buffeted by the devil at Coburg, he summoned those around him to sing this same psalm in derision of the devil. Amen. 
He was in a bad situation, but he knew that staying down there is not going to help him. So he called people, let us sing this Psalm 130 in derision to the devil. Let us let him know that, yes, we understand the situation. We know what is happening, but we are not going to give up. And so he has sing this song with me. So as bad as the situation was for the singer of Psalm 130, and by inference for us today, it is not the end of the road. It is never the end of the road. Then if it is not, what is this? And that leads me to the second point, human response. There is a particular way that we must respond to this situation. And that was how the psalmist responded. I'm going to talk about this in three ways. Uh, the first way that the psalmist uh, responded was to accept that sin is a leveler. Sin is an equalizer. And we will see that in verse 3. And it says, If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, who is going to stand? Can priests stand? Can bishops stand? Can presidents of nations stand before you, God? Can monks stand before you? Can traders, can fathers, mothers, children stand before you? No one can stand before God. No one can stand before him. These are not the days to think that we are reaping the sins of some set of people. No. These are not the days for one political party to appoint accusing figures to another political party. No. These are not the days to quickly exonerate ourselves. Because if God should mark iniquities, if God should take records of sins, all of us will be guilty. For we all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. One way or the other, we have sinned against God. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that God brought this calamity upon the world. That is not what I'm saying. But does God know about what is happening? Of course, it's God. He knows about what is happening. But we could trace whatever is happening to human, to human fallenness, to our mistakes, to our errors. We have given room for the enemy, for the devil to torment us. So this is not the day to Categorize sin. Because this is about commonality. This is about the nature of our fallenness rather than categorization of sin. The wages of sin, I say to you this morning, is antithetical to variables. The wages of sin is antithetical to variables. It is not determined by stock market. It is not determined by their principles and their forecast. The wages of sin remains the same. It is death. Whether somebody has committed a sin that to us as human beings is so big, or we have done something that is so minute, sin is sin before God. What is the second way for us to respond? 
if we accept truly that this is a leveler, that we are all involved in this, that we all have done something wrong somewhere, that we all need to cry out like Nehemiah. Nehemiah accepted the situation and said, I and my father's household have sinned against you. And that leads me to the second way that we must respond. We must cry out to God for help. We must cry out to God for help. Verses 1b and 2 say, I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. Right in the dungeon, right in the depths, right in a chaotic situation, the psalmist decided to cry out unto the Lord. He called unto God. It's a cry. It's not just a silent way of talking. It's a cry unto God. It shows helplessness on the side of man and calling on the name of the one who can help. When you hear political leaders, religious leaders, and organizational leaders make statements like, you don't make the timeline, the virus does, or we are not sure yet, or fellow citizens, these are days of uncertainties, or you hear them say, I am just as clueless as you are. Or better still, you hear leaders say, we are trying our best. We do not know when this is going to end. When you hear those words, we should consistently cry out to God for help. Because he's the only person that can help us. Our world is a dying world that is in desperate need of the living God. He's not a living God, he is the living God. The idols that are worshipped in Africa cannot save at this time. Idols that are worshipped in India cannot save at this time. The idols that are worshipped all over the world cannot save at this time. Secret cause. Secret societies cannot save at this time. The power of this world cannot save at this time. Technology is not going to help at this time. Yes, we should try, the government should do everything possible to stop this virus with the power of technology. But I tell you, who blesses technology if not God? Who blesses human's effort if not God? So this is the time for us to cry out unto God. And we must do it consistently. In John chapter 16, verse 24b, Jesus said, But now ask and keep asking, and you will receive, so that your joy may be full and complete. Number three way that we must respond to this situation as the psalmist responded, is found in verses 5 and 6. And I say we must learn to wait. Learn to wait on God. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. This is perhaps the toughest, the hardest thing for us to do at this time. Because we've been waiting. Everywhere is shut down. We've been asked to stay at home. We are all waiting. We are all anticipating when will all this end. No doubt, 
waiting is hard, but it is a training season. For I believe that God is going to bring us something out of our waiting. Waiting means we do not take into our hands what only God can do. For Christians, waiting is a spiritual discipline. And it is not passive. The psalmist says here that I wait on you. I wait in hope on your word. So waiting for us must be active. It's not just about we staying at home as Christians. And I want to bring to you today, as Christians, we are not to respond to this situation like any other person we respond to it. That is why we are called the church. We are called the representatives of the Most High God. That is why we are called the saint people. For we are called out of the world and sent back into the world. While we wait, while we stay at home, we must wait on God. We must wait to hear from him. We must wait searching his word. We must wait on him in prayer. We must go back to him and wait meditating on his word and listening, waiting for him to speak to us. We must wait in hope and wait in confidence that God, is going to see us through this situation. We are not the only person that ever waited. A lot of people in the Bible waited. Abraham waited. Moses waited. Ezekiel waited. Even Jesus Christ himself waited. He waited for the time to come. God could have brought him as a full-grown man. But he decided that there must be a time for Jesus to grow. And there must be a time for him to wait for the ministry to begin. He waited for his time. And we read in the epistle and the gospel today that even Jesus said to the apostles, to his disciples, that they must wait. And they waited. But you know what happened uh, in the gospel that we read, why they were waiting, the Bible says that Jesus came one day and he blessed them. You know what? Even in our present situation, God is still with us. God has not abandoned the world that he has created. And he has never abandoned the world for once. But when Jesus came in, the Bible says to us that Thomas was not there. I don't know where he went to. Maybe the, the, the remaining um, disciples sent him to buy bread, you know, or to buy something for them to eat like we are doing today. Everybody is staying at home. And somebody has to go out. Maybe daddy has to go out to buy something from, you know, grocery store uh, while he also keep uh, social distancing. But Thomas came back and said, well, I must see him. I learned some lessons about waiting from Lonnie Riley and Joyce Martin. When I read their books sometimes ago, and they said that God matures our faith as we become more dependent on him while waiting. They said that in a time of waiting, God grows our confidence in him as we learn to rest in the assurance that what he has promised, he will bring to pass in his time and in his way. They also said that God teaches us to pay attention while we are waiting. He teaches us to pay attention to his activity and become more aware of how he is continually at work in the world. And lastly, they said that God teaches us why we are waiting to act on what he places before us, no matter how insignificant those things may seem to be. So the time of waiting is not the time for us to just sit at home and, you know, 
play around and just talk. Of course, we should do that. We should relax our families. But I believe so much that much more than that, God wants us to wait on him and seek his face. The third thing, which is the last thing I want to talk about from this psalm, is God's faithfulness. In spite of everything that happened to the psalmist, the psalmist saw God's faithfulness. Verses 4, 7, and 8 say, But you, but with you, there is forgiveness that you may be feared. I want to quickly stop there. That is verse 4. Look, no matter what we have done, no matter how bad our situation is, God is still going to forgive us if we call upon him. God will forgive us. The situation described by the psalmist here when he says that, but with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. The situation is like when a surgeon cuts off a cancerous tumor from uh, someone's body. So when we cry out to God, God takes away, he cuts off, literally cuts off from us our sins. He forgives us to the extent that we become afraid. We honor him in reference because what the enemy thought God will not do for us, God is going to do it when we cry out to him. Verses 7 and 8 says, O Israel, Hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel. Not he may redeem Israel. He will redeem Israel. He will redeem the world. He will redeem America. He will redeem the nations of the world from all his iniquities. God will redeem us. If we call upon him, if we wait upon him. Why am I saying this? Why am I so sure? Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and we heal their land. These are not the days for us to be afraid. For the Bible says to us in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God has not given unto us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Brethren in the Lord, this is a time for us to believe God that his faithfulness is going to overcome our current situation, that God is going to redeem us. God is going to help us if we call upon him. Today, our world is no doubt a dying world in desperate need of the living God. So we must act like the psalmist. Understand the situation we are in. We must accept our helplessness and sinfulness. We must cry out to God. We must hopefully wait on him. Trust in his faithfulness to forgive and redeem every one of us. I say to you today, help is on the way. Let us pray. Hear my cry, O Lord, attend unto our prayer from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee and when my heart is overwhelmed. Please lead me to the 
rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. Please, Lord, hear our cry. Hear our cry, Lord. Hear the cry of nations. Hear the cry of your people. Attend unto us, Lord, for this is the time that we are overwhelmed. We need you, Lord. We believe, God, that we shall rise, O God Almighty, with your word today and sing this psalm in derision of the devil, that we shall rise, O God Almighty, for you to save us that we shall wait upon you. Give us strength, Lord, not to give up, not to be afraid. Give us grace to stand and stand to the end. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. And grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide those who govern us. And lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. And let your people sing with joy. O Lord, save your people. And bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And take not your Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of this world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, our King, by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, on the first day of the week, you conquered sin, put death to flight, and gave us the hope of everlasting life. Redeem all our days by this victory. Forgive our sins, banish our fears. Make us bold to praise you and to do your will. And steal us to wait for the consummation of your kingdom on the last great day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us by your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor run into any danger and that, guided by your Spirit, we may do what is righteous in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. O Almighty God, who in your wrath sent a plague upon your own people in the wilderness for their obstinate rebellion against Moses and Aaron, and also in the time of King David sent a plague of pestilence which killed 70,000, but remembering your mercy spared the rest, have pity upon us miserable sinners who now are visited with great sickness and mortality, and in the same way that you then accepted an atonement and commanded the destroying angel to cease from punishing so it may now please you to withdraw from us this plague and grievous sickness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, went about doing good and healing all manner of sickness and disease among the people, continue in our hospitals his gracious work among us, console and heal the sick, grant to the physicians, nurses, and assisting staff wisdom and skill, diligence, patience, and protection. Prosper their work, O Lord, and send down your blessing upon all who serve the suffering, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name. Amen. Amen. We pause now that you might offer your own supplications, requests, thanksgiving. And now praying together, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks 
for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant their requests. Till now, now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
experience and share the transforming love of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.